There have been non-stop aggressive calls for the Fed to decrease interest rates. Considering that we're being told the economy is doing well and that stocks are at all-time highs, I'm not sure where the basis for rate cuts is coming from. If this is simply to increase the speed at which stocks rise, be careful what you wish for. The biggest bubble in history is about to be expanded even further and unequivocally the bigger it gets, the worse the damage will be, in part due to the mad scientist created derivatives. Make sure you bring your raincoat, the flood is on its way. You came here for the truth so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to talk about all things Fed. We're going to look at the rate cuts. I'm going to show you all details surrounding it and where we expect this to go. Let's begin right away. Okay, so here is the Fed funds rate. You could see it is currently sitting at 2.39. It's always within the range of 2.25 to 2.5. And everybody from Jim Cramer all the way down the line, they've been calling for rate cuts. As I said in the introduction, we don't have a basis for the rate cuts because the economy apparently is doing so well, best ever in over 200 years. And then you look at the stock market. It's at all time highs right now. So why in the world do you need rate cuts? Well, unless they're hiding something from us well then we don't need a rate cut if anything we need a rate increase but I'm gonna show you in a moment what those in the Federal Reserve are saying in addition to the Fed funds rate, you also need to look at the shadow Fed funds rate. I have shown you this before, but essentially what it means is that the effect of quantitative easing was as if the Fed funds rate was brought into the negative. At its absolute peak, this would be approximately minus 3%. There's a model, there's a calculation that they have all around this. If you want to see more detail about it, this is directly from the Federal Reserve Board, Atlanta's website. I will have the link in the description, but essentially they break it all down. That's the simplified version. I just wanted to make note of the fact that this has been reversing as they've been increasing their interest rates very slowly, mind you, as well as winding down their balance sheet runoff. They were supposed to normalize the balance sheet. That never happened. Absolutely did not happen at all. It is nowhere near normal. And of course, they are now going to stop their wind down and they're going to have to do it sooner rather than later, simply because they want to give enough ammunition to these markets to keep it going. And they don't want to be too aggressive on the rate cuts because they all hit the floor very fast. They know that. And so here we are today watching it all happen in slow motion. A Fed president explained why he was the lone member who wanted an quote insurance cut this week. I already brought this to you right after it happened, but the Fed's Bullard basically was the only person of the voting members who said that they wanted to do a rate cut. He was willing to do so. Neil Kashkari, who was not a voting member, also said that he wanted two rate cuts, in fact. But here we have it, the suggestion that inflation is so low and that's why they can actually right now go ahead with rate cuts. Looking at the fake core PCE inflation rate, which excludes food and energy, are always giving the Fed a reason to cut rates. The inflation rate of 1.6%, let's say, in my opinion, isn't a bad thing because this 2% target that they're always trying to achieve only makes it worse when they're always consistently manipulating interest rates and quantitative easing and all this other business. It is not a way to try and centrally plan your financial system every little nuance they never used to do this 20 30 years ago plus that was not the case ever since really the year 2000 and more specifically after 2009 they have been altering this on such a high level even Druckenmiller was talking about this recently they are making a big mistake by trying to narrow down at such a minute level it's going to cause major problems it already is the Federal Reserve has another option besides rate cuts to battle a slowdown. Very simply, stop the balance sheet runoff. Okay, so what? You have almost $4 trillion worth. That's okay. All you need to do is stop the runoff and it's going to make everything better. They'll probably do this very soon because it will be very bullish to the markets in doing so. And hey, what's a $4 trillion on your balance sheet? You never even admitted to the $16 trillion plus that you printed up previously. So who cares, right? 
The market is no better than the Fed at forecasting the Fed funds rate. In fact, it's slightly worse. So the green line is the FOMC and their predictions based on the amount of time you can see in reality where it went versus their predictions, okay? So FOMC is the green line. You're looking at the red line, which is the market, and the blue line, which is the actual. So you could see the little steps up that they took with the actual Fed funds rate. Compare that to how these others really see it. It's never going to be increased at the rate which they say it would. But here we are, 2019, and we are still unable to get rates back to a normal level. We are still unable to get quantitative easing down to a level that is quote unquote normal. But here we are. This right here is just showing you members of the Fed and what they have said regarding rate cuts. Plenty of talk about rate cuts, but few have argued that they're actually appropriate. If you look at this, the Fed officials on policy easing since the return of the trade issues, basically from May into June and what they have said. We're talking about individuals like Powell, like Bullard, like Kashkari and others. Just look through this list for yourself if you want to see, but it's interesting to hear their words and and then what their actions are are often very different. On May 31st, Kashgari himself said, I'm not quite there yet for a cut. I take a lot of comfort from the fact that the job market continues to be strong. And immediately he turns around and says, no, no, we should have not one rate cut, but two, 50 basis points as fast as humanly possible. My, how the things really change. What information is he looking at that changed in between May 31st and literally two weeks later? Something's going on and it's not being told to the public. There are more examples of this in here if you want to check it out. I will leave the link here or you could just pause the video and read it. The font might be a little small. That's why I always include the sources for you. Act as needed are strong words unless qualified by conditions and caveats. So this shows you throughout the years going back from 1999 all the way up until present, showing you how they use the same words over and over again. And then in the second last column, it says cross cutting caveat. It then tells you on the very far right, did they actually engage in cuts or hikes and so on. As you can see, all throughout 2008 will act as needed. And of course, they're talking about cutting rates. And we know exactly what they did. They were able to bring interest rates down further and further and further in order to backstop the losses. It didn't do anything because we had major issues that were in the financial system at this time. You cannot trust what they say because all of their words are chosen very, very carefully and they do it not to help you out, not to make sure that everything's okay, but to ensure that you remain docile. Is value investing dead? It might be, and here's what killed it. Basically, what they're talking about is how tech stocks are everything today. You don't have to worry about anything else simply because tech stocks are all there. Tech stocks are everything. Tech stocks, tech stocks, Amazon, Amazon, Apple, Fang stocks, that's it. That's what this article is about right here, and I couldn't believe it because they haven't seen the next cycle. They don't know what's gonna happen in the future, and already they're saying that these stocks, they're dead because of technology. Yes, technology is becoming more prevalent. There's no doubt about that. It is the biggest stocks you have today. When you look at the markets, they're tech stocks. Understandable, absolutely. But does that mean that in the next crisis, that technology stocks are going to fare better than some of these other big names? That is not necessarily the case. You can only judge it based on how it goes through each cycle, multiple cycles. You can't say, look at its performance from 2009 up until present day. Yeah, technology has done extremely well and well deserved because of how much capital it brings in, all those other factors, I understand it. But to say that it's dead, I need to bore your crystal ball because apparently you know the future. This article is the case for cutting rates four times in the next 12 months. Basically suggesting that inflation is non-existent, you're not going to have a problem, and everyone will benefit when you bring interest rates down. That's what this entire article out of CNBC is about. Trust the market. It wants a lot of rate cuts. It's been saying that for months. They're saying, look, you've got room to lower rates, lower the cost of capital, and maybe provide more stimulus without the fear of inflation, so do it. This is the type of behavior that we have at the end of any cycle. There's a mania that's going on 
right now and people don't understand it when they're sitting in the middle of it. This is a very big issue that is never going to be taught to you at any level. They're always trying to push for more and more and more. I'm going to end the video there. If you found that informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a like on this video, you're supporting me, so I do appreciate that very much. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need, all the details from the foundation history, the asset classes, all of that is in the description, the link, first link at the top. If you want the audiobook, you can get that at themoneygps.com. If you want to know what's really going on, I break it down in this video. Definitely click on it, and I'll see you there.